what's up how are you guys this sunday frankie eyeballs is back with our local cia agent sam sulik <laughs> i think this guy had less than a million subscribers one or two months ago and now he's at almost three million i don't know one of you guys might be paying more attention uh, than me on that renowned around the world for his crispy cream and five guys diet <laughs> Uh, it's pretty horrible, and uh, he uses performance-enhancing drugs. He's taking Accutane, so I'm surprised he's still alive. <laughs> but uh, uh, we can see what he's doing. I mean, this got uh, 600,000 views three days ago. I mean, he's he's been getting crazy, crazy views. So the algorithm's definitely pushing him. And the way a lot of these super popular influencers work is it's not like a direct sponsorship or endorsement, but when you get someone really, really popular that has a large platform to do things, it increases the sales. That's just how it is. So that's definitely something to consider here whenever he's doing something. Yo, did he change the music? I'm pretty sure he changed the music. Can you believe it? I'm finally back. Well, finally back to look at the food intake. So I've already got three. One thing I will say, this complete tool bag that owns Hostile copyrighted the video that I did of them last time, got me a copyright strike. I emailed him. I was like, hey, hey, look, I'll take the video down. Just withdraw the strike. I'll delete the video. He didn't do it. And YouTube, for some reason, sided with him. But it doesn't make sense because... When you post a video on YouTube, it's in the public domain. It's technically fair use, but they still, they just don't like me. So they just did that to me. That's, that's the only positive thing I have to say about his company. And I won't, uh, I won't be further derogatory. I will keep this 100% factual. Uh, I think that's a pretty tacky colored shirt, uh, though, you know, lack of style. I bet they charge 70 bucks for it. And that, that thing he has on his head, it's, it's a Rode microphone. It's Wi-Fi. I mean... Most people don't care or know about Wi-Fi. I mean, you can't see. He's got he's got the phone. I'm blocking the phone. That's right there on the table. He's got he's got the mic. Probably twenty or thirty percent of your overall health is radiation reduction. Now, I'm always wearing the clothing we have on Wi-Fi Shielding.com. I try to shield my head as much as possible. This whole room you guys can't see because there's a green screen, but it's shielded in metal. Like very very important factor that none of these people consider. Servings of checks. I was actually kind of disappointed. I was scanning around the kitchen. I was looking for a box of golden grams that used to be floating around in here. Somebody must have finished them off. But, you know, whatever. Simple carb. I know some dudes would pretty much hype up the uh, the checks over any other kind of cereal. Just because it's rice-based. Rather than, like, you know, grain or wheat or whatever. But it's to me, I'm looking at 120 grams of carbs. It was like 3 grams of fat. Basically, I mean, I haven't really paid attention. Did I? Did, did he say anything? It, this poor kid's face is so inflamed. His face looks so red. That's actually not true. I was about to say negligible. No, do not even think about skipping. Like I just looked up the nutrition label, right? Per serving one gram of fat, in you know this little dry checks. Don't just skip over that. That's the absolute worst mistake you could do. In a bulking context, it's not bad. Right, because of course you'd be eating more food than you're really tracking. But if you're trying to diet down, you know you've got to be OCD, Mr. Monk level. Like any amount of ketchup you get, that's three grams of carbs. Any amount of extra oil you put in the pan when you made some eggs, that's five grams of fat. You know, when it comes to my dieting, not style, but maybe theory, if you could call it that, calories is the number one factor, right? Because you gotta remember, I could eat as perfect food. So this IIFYM, if it, if it fits your macros, like macronutrient, fat, carb, protein, warrior nonsense is really, really ingrained in, in the dietary culture. It's what the mainstream is pushing as the end all be all factor in health because they don't want you to know the truth that they're poisoning you with all this crap they put in the food, how polluted everything is, the agrochemicals. They don't want you to know that you need to go organic 
and eat high quality foods. And if you do that, you can eat whatever amount of those high quality homemade foods you want, and you will be healthy and have a good body composition. I completely, I eat a loaf of, I literally eat a loaf of bread every single day, and I can't really go above 12% body fat because it's homemade it's and high one. quality. Train as hard as I want for years on end. But if I don't eat enough calories to be in a calorie surplus and actually deposit, well, mass, but primarily muscle onto my frame, I'm not going to get anywhere. I mean, I'll look like a freak, but I'll still be like 220. You know, the only way to actually gain weight is to eat calories in excess. Is to use copious amounts of performance enhancing drugs. And vice versa is apparently a hard truth. And from some like TikTok freak out videos I see, apparently it's a argued as truth but the only way to lose body fat again same thing but in reverse I, i'm honestly legitimately surprised that no one has sued these people in court yet like because i think it's a pretty cut and dry lawsuit like hey you're using performance enhancing drugs you're not putting a disclaimer at the beginning of your videos and you're giving people advice on diet and nutrition and stuff that is completely like <laughs> it, it, it just doesn't make any sense you can disregard everything this guy says based on the fact that he's using like unnatural steroids to get to where his body is. Less calories than your body burns per day, aka a calorie. What's deficit. the word the kids are using now? But Stop yapping. That, I'm really trying to get in yapping. Tons of carbs. You know my 250 grams of protein. Grade A yapper. I kind of stay around a gram per pound. How many grams right, of so test? Right now, about 250. How many grams of trend? 250 grams. If you're a buck, how many 60, grams of rat poison? Go for a buck sixty. Just, if you do two hundred at that weight, or if you did a hundred at that weight, I don't think it's going to change anything too much. Oh, what's that? But good rule. What's that drug called? DNP. They they use like it's like called DMP or something. Literal rat poison. They used to cut weight. Um, I'd say gram per pound is where you're at. In terms of fats, it kind of fluctuates. Maybe uh, maybe a fourth of that. Yo, I br I bring this up every time steroids are brought up. I, for, I can always forget what it's called. It's like DHEA or dehydrotestosterone. It used to be for sale in powder on Amazon. Like it, it's now it's like a now it's illegal and you can't sell it anywhere. But it was crazy. You used to be able to buy it. So usually my fats are around. Well, the bulking gets a little funky. W whatever. It. Uh, I don't really have a specific fat goal I'm aiming for. Bulking days, I'll get up in the one fifties. But carbs. I did a whole rant in the drive back from the gym last night about how carbs are totally going to change the way my workouts and pumps feel. So that's what I'm really trying to push. So today, by the end of it, I should be about at 800-ish grams of carbs. So good start with 120. 800 uh, grams of carbs? Holy crap. Of course, anytime you're eating anything, at least as often as you can, food scale is gonna come in crazy fucking handy. But we made a video a few months ago and we spoke we speak a lot about the importance of vitamin B one in carbohydrate metabolism. So I'm sure a lot of these people and most people in America in general could really benefit from a super high dose B one supplement because that's the primary vitamin used to process carbohydrates. Pour on I don't know, three cups of milk or so. That'd be seven twenty grams. You have these big commodity companies producing this milk, super low quality, super cheap, super bad for you. When, you know, if you go to, well, we still, we have all the raw milk and dairy products on Frankie's Free Range Meat, but you might be spending more money relatively to the amount of product you're buying, but you're going to drink a lot less and need a lot less of it because it's such high quality. Perfect. So, three servings of. So that puts me about 170 grams of carbs, 25 grams of protein, and about 25 grams of fat for this whole bowl. So that's however many calories I don't. I'll do the math in the end. I'll add like a counter, like um, super important. It was kind of confusing a little bit last time. So each meal, I'll just write out the macros, and then at the end of the day, I'll write out the total. So. How many, gra how many grams of sauna sweat? I don't know, five minutes. Do we need to drink? However long do you it have takes to lick. To get this down and then go do cardio. So this is the pre-cardio meal. Fasted, it's 
not going to make a fucking difference. And if you're bulking, are you going to are you going to replenish your sodium macronutrient by licking the sweat as you work out? Breakfast off your or at least a moderately sized breakfast is going to make it a bit easier because you got to remember if you do no breakfast and like let's say you're going to school so you don't eat anything until this lunch. guy's number one yapper then that means you've only got from lunch till whenever you go to sleep that's your window to eat whereas the dude who had a big ass breakfast his window is going to be the complete day so so now let's just jump to whatever i eat next the post cardio meal all right so apart from any you know maybe tweets tweets <laughs> apart from any treats or anything that i might have before i go train this will pretty much be the pre-workout meal this is what i've kind of been loving so obviously I actually go out of my way cook steak usually i'm kind of lazy i like getting a lot of pre-made food like a costco huge 15 pound turkey breast and just cut chunks off but the steaks i've been loving so about a pound of steak 100, 100 grams of protein I'd usually just do one of these, like eight ounces, but since breakfast was kind of lower on protein, I'll just double up. Yeah, bro, only three three cups of milk, low on protein. This looks actually reasonable. I'm surprised people can even do the prepped food stuff because when, when you cook something fresh, like it's so much tastier. Like I can't even really eat like leftovers. I just don't like, unless I was like really hungry and starving. And even then, if I had a, plate of leftovers i'd only eat like half of it because it just doesn't taste good and then a pre-made kind of um i forget the brand but it's like a five serving thing of mashed potatoes so all this adds up i, I already tracked it on my phone i'm gonna have to pull it back up but 100 grams of protein 20 ish grams of fat maybe a little more with all the avocado oil i cooked it in and then this is going to be about 90 grams of carbs maybe 14 grams of fat if i remember right I mean, avocado oil, you know, it's always questionable quality. It's not reliable, and it's it's not a saturated fat. It's not the healthiest oil to cook with. At least he's got some beef in there. But buying, like, pre-made mashed potatoes, who knows what's in there? I highly doubt they only use potatoes and butter. If they do, it's actually not bad. But it's also possible they put, like, vegetable seed oils and chemical flavorings and preservatives in it. So why don't you just make it yourself and eat, eat I mean – this is way above and beyond anything this guy would ever do is, is, you know, what type of water were the potatoes cooked in? I mean, I don't think anyone else on YouTube has, has cooked potatoes in bottled mineral water like I have. But, you know, that's about right. So I've never really been a huge proponent of really hitting meals, per se. That's one factor which um, I kind of differentiate in terms of my, uh, let's just call it Rich Piana similarities. Because calories are calories, dude. You can't eat something and have it not count. That's one thing that I think people really kind of have to understand. Like, if you're dieting and you're like, okay, I'm going to have this as a treat. Or even worse, let's say you're not really doing a strict diet. You're just kind of a layman kind of character. And, oh, not, you get what I'm saying. You're not crazy invested. And you're like, yeah, hey, I'll, I'll have a salad for lunch. Hey, I'll, I'll just have a couple eggs for breakfast. Right? In your mind, you're like, I did good today. And then it's... 8 o'clock, eat a bunch of pizza that was in the fridge left over, a couple scoops of ice cream. That just one hour of snacking before you go to bed will completely offset all the quote-unquote good that you did that day. So that's kind of why I sort of took a bit of an anal kind of stance about tracking every kind of calorie. So in a way, this is almost, if you wanted to call it that, you could say meal three. But after cardio, I stopped in the vending machine at the Oh my god, I can't. Uh my brain is too fried today to deal with this guys. If you're like binging and eating crap food at night, it's because you're not getting what you need in your diet. If you can stick to, you know, higher quality foods and eat what you should be for two or three weeks and get the right vitamin and mineral supplements, you're not gonna have those cravings. I thought he was gonna explain something that I'd actually agree with, which is, you know, six to nine meals a day that some crazy bodybuilders do. They used to do that because they were so hungry and they were cutting and restricting their calories. So for them, it, it was better to break up, you know, the beef and rice into two or three meals instead of one large meal. Because, you know, they're digesting and metabolizing so fast, they'd rather be hungry for shorter periods of time on smaller meals than hungry for a longer period of time on a larger meal. That's more relevant to restricting calories. 
because when you're trying to gain weight and you're eating a lot of food, you know, you can't really even eat six, seven, eight meals if you're eating as much as possible at any of those meals. Jim, two things of juice, 60 grams of carbs total, followed by two big ass crunch bars, 400 calories total. So that puts me Bro, at like, I can't. whatever I'm at now. But I'm sure once I finish this, plus a bunch of water with electrolytes and a couple of amino acids, I'm going to want to take a pretty substantial nap. But afterwards, right, once that nap is taken and most of the carbs from this. Um... I say I see all the meal. I say the meal is reasonable and he's having like uh, orange juice and crunch bars, dude. Or, I mean, juice in general, even if you have high quality organic juice, it's pretty hard on the gut candida. It can cause dysbiosis really easily because it's a lot of sugar and it has a lot of surface area in the stomach. It just it's just digested and absorbed too fast. I mean, crunch bars and candy bars. <sighs> I, I, you'd be surprised in some context, like the ingredients in a candy bar, at least they don't use a crazy amount of vegetable seed oil sometimes, but there, there, there can be a lot of crap in them depending on which one it is. Mashed potatoes are blown around my system. Plus I'm fully hydrated from finishing off this tub of water. Then I'm going to feel super fucking energized for legs. The last thing I'd want to do, and this is why I don't train early in the morning why I like cardio in the morning, lift later at night. It's just because right in the morning, give me one moment. Right in the morning, that's when you're in your, well, you're literally in a fasted state. I mean, don't people, this all like, don't they inject insulin after every meal, you know? Isn't isn't that something important that that you can include in the lawsuit when you sue him for for getting fat and having a heart attack on his diet that he forgot to mention you need to take insulin every meal when you're eating this state from going the whole night without eating. So if that's when you have to train, I guess you just have to deal with it. But I'm going to feel much better, stronger, more endurance, just going to have a better pump and a better workout if I wait for the whole day of, you know, a substantial amount of calories and meals and carbs and does Water. hostile cell performance enhancing? What do they sell? What are they? Do they? Is it just supplements? Electrolytes. Because right in the morning, I'm not very hydrated. If anything, I'm dehydrated. You know, you lose a couple of pounds every night. I guess it depends on how big you are. But just by breathing, you're breathing out water. You're gonna wake up literally more dehydrated than you were at night. So, for me, it just makes sense. Tons of food during the day, fuel up, super hydrated, and then when I actually get into my lift. That's when I'm like, okay, gas tanks at F, gas tanks at full. I'm ready to try to empty that thing as hard as I can, a.k.a. you know, push every set as hard as I can. So that's kind of the plan for tonight. So if this is the last actual meal, then we'll get straight to the car talk. But leg Yeah, that's a little subjective, but it depends on your overall lifestyle. Like if you work a manual labor job, you know, if you go to the gym at night after doing manual labor all day, like your workout's going to suck. That's just how it is. Or if someone like sleeps really well compared to someone who doesn't sleep really well, regardless that that person with overall better lifestyle factors is going to be stronger at any point in the day. It's going to be pretty sick. Or even I'm going to a gym that has a really nice someone who injects testosterone. It doesn't matter. It's like cable loaded, but we'll just talk about that. Then we're there. If I talk, if I talked about the workout every meal, this would be like a two hour video, but this will just fucking disappear in the next 20 ish minutes. I'm sure I'll probably take a nap right here and just sit down on my phone. And when I wake up, I'll be ready to take the pre and get out of here. Now that. Imagine nap. imagine being so like insulin damaged that you fall asleep with a, a Rode microphone frying your brain. Uh, so now I think like the next like 45 minutes of this is workout. So we're going to skip all of this workout stuff so i forgot to add intra workout was 100 grams of carbs in the hostile bottle yeah i forgot about that i was doing the uh, i was doing the blue gatorade you know if you're curious why the um the cluster dextrin shake isn't doesn't this guy look a little like jacob alordi and, and forgive me for being mean but like 
the ladies are obsessing over him. Maybe there's a little too much estrogen in the water when they see tall dudes, but like, like I could have the most, I could have the most botched eye surgery ever, and I would still look better than that guy. Anyway, back yet the post workout instant fifty to one hundred grams of carbs plus twenty ish grams of protein. I'm kind of saving it for later. That's um, I don't want to call it like a last resort. But in I think he said he had a Dextro shake. Uh, and I will mention we have Flextrose on OregonSupplements.com. High quality organic Dextrose, only natural one on the market. Usually it's made with like low quality, chemically infused corn, chemical infused corn, agrochemical, herbicide and pesticide and fungicide infused corn. Way It kind of is. I mean, it's a super easy, like pretty much 500 calories, you know, just like that. So I might save that for later. Like once 5,000 or so calories gets a little bit more difficult, or let's say not difficult, but it becomes my new baseline, then adding that big shake post-workout, that'll definitely put me over the edge. Did he say into, what he's eating? You know, maintaining growth. So I kind of jumped the gun a little bit while the water was boiling for the ramen. I was already picking at the flank steak that my dad made earlier. So basic premise, 12 ounces of flank steak, Two packs of chicken ramen, so 100-ish grams of carbs right here, 14 of fat, 75 grams of protein, and about, I think I said 10. I might actually go back and change it. It's probably more like at least 17 grams of fat. Hey, at least he's eating a lot more beef. Did he get a check from the Cattlemen's Association? <laughs> Put steak in every meal. Maybe he'll, uh, maybe next video he'll be chopping steak up into pieces and put, pouring milk over it and having that for breakfast instead of the Chex Mix. It's kind of like so close yet so far, right? Because I have beef with udon noodles every night, but the difference between like the super high quality organic udon noodles I have versus this chicken ramen uh, catastrophe is, uh, is a lot. You know, you have low quality wheat, you have a lot of chemicals, preservatives, it's made with, you know, fluoridated tap water. All the agrochemicals and all the ingredients that go in there, it's just the sodium, MSG. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll add that up and put it wherever. <laughs> but not a lot of crazy treats today, though, when it comes to the actual... Not a lot of, of crazy treats, eating, bro. You had two crunch bars bigger than your head. <laughs> uh, for the most part, I do look at it as calories in, calories out, right? How many carbs are in it? How many fats are in it? How much protein is in it? But protein is a little different. I do definitely put a lot of emphasis on making sure that the 250 grams of protein that I'm getting in per day is from a high quality source. You know, you can look this up. It's a, uh, I don't, I forget the exact term, but it's like the protein grading scale. So it's basically zero to 100, right? 100 obviously being the best. Zero being the worst. I mean, he's eating red meat, but I don't know if uh, I don't know if conventional milk counts as a high quality protein source. I mean, it's conventional meat too. And historically, I've kind of had a habit of not really tracking protein from you know breads. Really, just any kind of non-protein source. Like it said, there's like eight grams of protein in this ramen. <laughs> from what? From the rice? Look, it's not like it's not nothing. And in a dieting context, you do need to take that into account since the proteins are going to count as calories. It is going to count as energy towards your total consumption for the day. But in a bulking context, I want to make sure that every gram of the 250 I'm getting is from you know, pretty much up in that 90 range. And that's where you're going to see... Another big problem with these conventional foods is when the omega-6 content is really high, it throws off your appetite. So you're eating more than your body naturally wants to. When you have the high quality organic foods, you can eat as much as you want and go with your appetite. You know, you don't have to count the amount of protein. You don't have to count the amount of carbohydrates. As you eat the meal, your body will tell you like, okay, I don't really want another bite of steak anymore. I don't really want another bite of pasta. But when you have these, you know, agrochemical infused uh, hyper palatable omega-6 bombs you just eat and eat and eat and you don't stop uh, i mean must be like eight or nine years ago now but i remember i was uh, maybe s seven i don't know but back when i was carnivore 
I did try eating conventional grain fed beef for a few days and compared to the grass fed stuff, I was eating like twice as much. I could not stop eating it. You know, I just never satisfied my appetite. And also I'd like have to take a nap after, uh, after I ate, cause like the atrazine and the chemicals and the estrogenic properties of the meat. So you have to, th there's a lot of factors and, and a combination of a lot of different things that cause this food to be so bad for you. I haven't looked at it for a while, but it's chicken, milk, steak, fish, eggs. Uh, what else am I missing? Yeah, probably other, you know, animal products, animal meats, right? Shit like that. And as you go lower on the scale, you're going to start to see more. A, a legitimate ranking list would be based on the quality of the product. Like you can't lump meat, fish, chicken all together when you're comparing like grass fed beef to white, uh, what, what's the brand? Eggland's best eggs. Like it's not comparable. Vegetable proteins, soys, whatnots, wheat proteins, barley proteins, like things along those, those lines. And that's why I'm not going to really count the protein in bread or the protein in I'm trying to think what else, I don't know, whatever. Right, the protein in that bowl of cereal I had for breakfast, it says three grams of protein per serving. Come on, let's be real. You want proteins with a complete amino or acid array, right? Everybody's heard the term complete protein thrown around. So that's, I mean, best case scenario, that's in the meats. So any vegetarians or vegans, even worse. Nah. We did a video on this a while ago. I basically explained the, the uric acid cycle and why the body can't synthesize uh, synthesize proteins that well from plant-based products. And I also explained, I think, why uh, when you take testosterone as a vegan, it, it alleviates some of that. In terms of ethics or values, but in terms of getting a really complete amino acid array, you are at a little bit of a disadvantage. I'm not going to say it's not good to do your soy proteins or whatever. I'm not saying if you eat yeah, it's, tofu. Okay, if you're injecting testosterone in your tissue. Your estrogen. That's, that's not the point I'm trying to make. But I feel like it's a little bit of a, not a roadblock, but a little bit more of a hassle if that's your deal, if that's what you're working around for your diet. So this will put me at 40, 48.87. My math may end up being wrong since I'm going to have to go back and like add up all the individual meals I've already tracked. But Ro does not about stop yapping. Calories so far, and only 200 grams of protein. So I think there's still going to be one more meal before. Bro, bed. where's the hostile products? I guess you didn't write them a big enough check, bro. What happened to the hostile sponsorship? Obviously, maybe not so much of a meal. Maybe just a couple of treats or something from the fridge. There's a, uh, I got a bag of Doritos I'm kind of been itching to eat at. Maybe I'll grab that later. But I'm going to sit here rewatching Jujutsu Kaisen season two. Not going to go all the way back to season one yet. But, you know, probably. Is that why his forearms are so big, bro? He's just like go gooning to hentai old. <laughs> bro, I, I can't. I would be so happy if the internet never existed. <laughs> After one episode, all this is going to disappear. I'm going to have a reasonably full belly. Honestly, I'm not really there yet. Like, after this whole day of eating, I still feel pretty slim, at least stomach-wise. I do get to a point in, uh, in my bulks where I can tell I've got a ton of food on my stomach. And it's almost just a little bit extra distended. Maybe, uh, maybe first, no, no, no. What am I saying? Not first try trouble gut at 20. But if you get a ton of food in your stomach, it's going to sit there for a minute before it actually gets distributed throughout your whole build. But carbs, proteins, fats, electrolytes from all the salt and the ramen. The only thing that gets me there, this will be my last little point with this meal. When it comes to salt, it gets a lot of hate. It gets a lot of hate by the layman's. You know, you don't want to have too much salt in your food. It's going to make you hold water, you know. And to an extent, they're kind of right. Because you got to remember, uh, well, let, let me just kind of get into it. Yeah, bro, go eat half a pound of prosciutto and tell me salt's good for you. See how you feel after that. <laughs> so let's say you take a dude, and he's been eating two grams of salt per day, or a gram of salt per day. 
If that next day he slams five grams out of nowhere or 10 grams out of nowhere, who knows what he's been eating? He might feel like he's holding a little bit of water because it's kind of, I mean, if you have a ton of salt all at once. Or... Bro, there's people with like slight health issues. When, when you do stuff like this, it'll like destroy your kidneys for a month. Like you'll have urinary issues for a month. Some people, you got to be careful. So a lot of this advice these people give, it's in the context of the average person that might not notice too much of a difference or da, da, da. But when some, someone with actual compromised health tries this type of stuff, it's like it could be the catalyst, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back. If you totally cut your salt all at once, it's going to result in a pretty gnarly change in your hydration level. I'm not like a... I'm not super informed on like peaking for like a bodybuilding show or water weight what, What's cuts. peaking? Is that like gooning? <laughs> I feel like trolling today, guys. If you're like a UFC guy, but that's the kind of stuff that they're messing with. But let's say you're even getting five grams of salt. Peaking today. with my or, UFC bros. You know, five to 10, whatever. We're peaking. As long as you're getting a good amount of fluids in your system and you're actually drinking a lot of water, not just like two cups of these a day. I mean like, you know, half gallons at least a half gallon. You're never going to be wrong with a whole gallon per day. Then don't worry about it. Do not freaking worry about it. If anything, having extra salts and electrolytes is just going to make you more hydrated when you couple that with all the fluids you're intaking. But I, I mean, if you're eating high quality foods, like you're going to get a lot of potassium and minerals in the food, mineral water, if you're drinking it, that's where you get most of your calcium. And then sodium, you just put a little bit of salt on the food. That's all you need. I'm going to watch my show, play my phone, make this food disappear, and then we can cut to whatever I ate before bed. <laughs> I feel that. I've actually, I've actually been passing out lately because um, what I'll do is I'll have my, like, my lunch. At, like, I mean, I haven't been eating lunch until like, I don't know, 7, 7.30 lately because my schedule's fried. I'm just working so much. But I've been having uh, this new detox smoothie I've been making with, with my lunch. So it's like 2,500 calories. And then when I go to bed, I'm just clonked out for like uh, for like 8, 9, 10 hours. And then like I didn't end up eating dinner. I get up the next day early, like 5, 6 a.m. and I have to work. So I can relate to that. But this guy is clonking out to sleep like every single meal. Like the, the only way I'm able to like spike my insulin and clonk out like that is by having, you know, artificially high amounts of carbohydrates like that smoothie i make is like 100 grams of carbs after my already my meal that already fills me up that has an insane amount of carbs but uh i guess that's it this is already way longer than i thought it was going to be wanted it to be uh so we're going to wrap this up i don't think i don't think uh i've really said anything constructive uh this is a lot better than what he was doing you know, he's got, he's got reasonably, I guess, if, you, if you're looking at Krispy Kreme, clean sources of carbohydrates now, and he's got a lot of red meat. So it has shifted for the better. Still still some issues, but uh, can't really complain much if, if you guys saw his previous videos. But if you guys do want to support me, you can check out frank com for all my interesting businesses. Frankie Strange Meat, Frankie Strange Foods, Wi-Fi Shielding, Oregon Supplements, Frankie's Naturals. Uh, we got new products as usual every week, guys. The hot dogs are back in stock. Had some of them for lunch yesterday. Very delicious. Uh, we got Wagyu skirt steak is back on the meat website. On the foods, we have the jardiniera and the sauerkraut. The potato chips are there. Just, just really, really high quality stuff. You guys can check it out. But as always, thank you guys for joining me. You can drop a like on the video. Leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And... If you guys have any videos or, or other creators you'd like me to critique, review their day of eatings, definitely let me know down in the comments.